Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about case insensitive sorts, uh, specifically in Python, uh, but other languages have the same issue and in some cases, the same solution as well. Uh, but we're going to be talking about why dot lower and dot upper are not quite the most accurate way to do a case insensitive sort. They work for most things, but of course there are edge cases and that's why Python has a function called casefold, which we'll show uh, when, we, when we get to that. Uh, but let's start with just a simple program and show you that upper and lower basically work. They mostly do what you want them to do, uh, but then we'll show why they're subtly wrong. Okay, so we're going to make a list, and it's going to contain some words in it. So uh, let's do, I don't know, A, B, C, uh, A, D, five, just nonsense words. Um, and if you were to sort these, uh, actually, I think these will sort correctly already. Let's do... Let's do this so they sort <laughs> quote unquote wrong in a case instead of way uh so if we do lst dot sort and we print lst here we should get them in uh, oh yeah okay so they're out of order here and that d came before b if we're trying to consider them case insensitive uh, we can fix this by using a key lambda s to s dot lower of course lower is wrong here and we'll show why it's wrong in a bit uh, but this implements your case insensitive sort. Uh, you can also use upper. Uh, it also suffers from the same problem we're about to show. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's case insensitive sort if you don't know about case fold. Case fold is how you're supposed to implement this. Uh, and you'll see that it, it basically produces the same result here. The reason that case fold exists is there are some characters in Unicode, well, even in less than UTF-8, uh, that aren't... They're, they're lowercase already, but they're not lowercase enough. It's kind of a bad way to explain it, but uh, there, there are some characters that uh, should actually be compared in different ways because they're already lowercase. Um, here's one example of those, and this is the one given in the Python docs, uh, but I'll show you a script that I wrote to find a whole bunch of other, one, uh, other ones, which is this German b looking character <laughs> it's actually i think pronounced with the sound but i i don't anyway i don't speak german so you'll have to you'll have to look that up um you can uppercase this character and you'll notice a weird thing about this if you uppercase it it actually turns into two characters uh not one but two uppercase s's um but if you lowercase it it's the same as the character already is there's nothing nothing special about this um however if you case fold this character you'll see that it normalizes to two lowercase s's in the same way that uppercasing it would convert it to two, uh, two capital S's. Um, and so if you wanted to sort based on this, you would, you would want it to sort uh, next to s's, but um, if you're just using lower, that's not going to work. Uh, here's another character that also has this problem. Uh, let's see what this one is called. Unicode data, Unicode data dot name. Latin small ligature FF. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this character uh, is equal to itself. It's already a lowercase character. However, if you were to case fold it, you're actually going to end up with two separate F characters because this apparently this ligature should sort near Fs. Uh, now I wanted to show you the script that I wrote that finds a whole bunch of other ones. Blow away the contents of this. Uh, I'll talk you quickly through what I'm doing here. Uh, so I'm looping over all of the integers within, it probably should have been 65536, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I am converting the integer number to a character, ignoring exceptions because there's some things that just aren't characters. And then if there's a difference between the lowercase and the case folded version, I print out the integer value, the character and its name, the lowercase character and its name, and all of the characters that it normalizes to. Because many, many of the cases with case fold, a single character turns into a bunch of other ones. And if we run this, we'll see that there's a whole bunch of interesting cases here. Uh, you know, some of, the, some of the first interesting ones are that micro sign and the Greek small letter mu, uh, despite being two separate uh, Unicode code points, are actually normalizing to the same value, which makes sense. You would want them to sort the same if you saw you know, the homoglyph there. Uh, here's the, the example that the docs give. Uh, there's a whole bunch of cases where there are modifier, char modifier characters that are represented in a single glyph, but you would probably want to sort them based on their two separate uh, 
code points. Uh, you know, there's a there's a whole bunch of other examples here. A lot of Greek letters. There's uh, the Armenian alphabet, the Cherokee alphabet. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of characters that are similar to this. Also, a whole bunch of these like very uh, pogrammery. <laughs> that was not something I should say. Um, a bunch of you know combining characters sort of things here. I don't actually know what this word is, but it looks funny to me. Anyway, uh, that's why you would use case fold instead of upper or lower. Uh, I think in C sharp, there's like a two upper invariant, which is the same idea as case fold, except they picked uppercase instead of lowercase. Um, but yeah, it does, it does normalization before lower casing such that you can get a more natural case insensitive sort. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.